Hello. Hey, hello, is this Jalen? Yeah. Hey, Jalen, this is Tommy Bryson. Sorry for the late call. Um, just wanted to just call me to record it and potentially upload to YouTube. How can I help? All right, what's going on, man? Uh, first of all, I just wanted to say I've been watching your channel for a little while, man. Like, since I was like, I'm 17 right now. So since I was like 16, I got into you because when I was trying to get into stocks, but now I'm into real estate now. So mm -hmm. I was going to ask you because I'm 17 right now. I'm not 18. I was going to ask you what should I be doing right now to like prepare for when I turn 18 and I can start making moves. And also, what can I do on top of that besides real estate to make passive income? You have a job right now? Yeah, I do. I you get still in like, high school? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a junior right now. Okay. What what what's your job? I work at a restaurant. Um, I get it. it's about like I'd say five hundred bi weekly, five to six bi weekly. So that's like twelve hundred dollars a month. I said a thousand, right? Right. And why do you want to do real estate? I want to do real estate because my my goal is to get financial freedom and be able to like enjoy it while I'm young. I know like not early twenties, but maybe like late 20s, early 30s, I want to be able to be in a good position. And I also want to build generational wealth that I could pass it down. There's a lot of big words, man. It's pretty awesome. Definitely. All right, man. So here's the big thing, right? Real right. estate is cool. But when you're a brand new investor to real estate, the big problem is basically when you buy a property and you don't have the money, you can't afford it. If anything breaks down and you don't have the income to actually supply it, you're gonna be basically having an issue. So let's say I go to the bank, I had a job, they approved me for a crazy loan, a big amount of money. I basically buy this property, turns out the roof is leaking or anything happens, then I don't have that money, I have a problem, right? I have some vacancy, I have a problem, right? There's a lot of problems involved in it, right? It's a lot of upfront costs, right? So now my biggest thing would be, if I'm 17 years old, about to turn 18, I'm a junior, one more year until I get, for example, my high school diploma, what would be my main focus? The answer would be, trying different things out. So when you were 16, you wanted to do stocks. Now you want to do real estate. It's because basically you're very young and you're trying to figure out what you like and what you don't like. It's very normal stuff, okay? So I try to, if I really wanted to do real estate, I would try to call over some offices and be like, hey, I'm 17 years old, but I have job experience. I just want to work in the office, maybe as a secretary, as whatever it is, right? And just get in the place where you want to be, right? While you're still in high school. That's the big thing. Now, if you're there, the answer is you get some experience, like on hand, see how people work, if you actually enjoy the whole thing. Now, when I say real estate this way, I mean, for example, selling real estate, right? It's not really investing into real yeah, estate. I want, yeah, I wanted to be a real estate investor. I've actually read um, three books on the subject. I'm currently reading one right now. Now, the big thing is, as far as how I would go ahead and invest into real estate, right? The answer would be, the first thing is, I would invest in myself to get a skill. Right, because if your goal is to basically invest in real estate, you need income. No income, no gain. Because you need to prove that basically you can actually afford this real estate. So if you're in college, I mean, in high school right now, when you graduate, what do you want to do? Do you want to get a license in real estate? Do you want to um, become a nurse? Do you want to do a trade job? Do you want to go to college? What do you want to do? You know, once you figure out what you want to do, and you go after that thing, my priority is basically to graduate debt free. Right. So when I graduate debt free or pay for whatever I'm going to do debt free, now I have this skill. This skill is going to pay me a lot of money, whether it's forty thousand, fifty thousand or sixty thousand dollars or even more potentially. Now, with the sixty thousand dollars, I can basically go ahead and basically start investing into real estate. But I still wouldn't do it at that age. Right. Because my main goal would be, hey, I want to get financial freedoms first and also financial stability first. So how do you do that? The first step is basically you want to pay off all your debts. By this point, though, because you're so early on, most likely you don't have any debt right now, do you? Right. Okay, awesome. So once you're out of debt, the big thing is going to be, hey, let me save for emergencies. That's going to be somewhere around three to six months of your of your expenses. Right now you live with your mom, right? Yeah, I live with my mom. Yeah, so you're not, and maybe like two, three years from now, you're still going to live with your mom, so it'll be fine. You don't need all that money in that in that account. But on top of that, you'll be investing, for example, 10 to 20% of your money into retirement. The rest of the money... Once you build it, for example, the emergency account, you can grab the money and say, hey, I'm going to save up money, for example, for a down payment on a home. Now, however, though, four years from now, bro, you're like 21. Do you have to buy a house at age 21? The answer is no. You don't have to. If you want to rent for a while, 
to figure out where you actually want to be and you want to save money for a while longer so when you're when you do buy you can actually buy in confidence that's fine too so if you're ready for example at age 23 24 25 26 27 you're still pretty young but when you buy this house my rule would be hey i buy this house and by the way this is going to go against everything you read so far but it's the way i would do mm -hmm. it for financial freedom for myself the answer is i would buy a house on a 15-year mortgage i would also make sure this house does not exceed more than 33 percent 33% of my monthly income. Now, what happens here is basically you get a very low amount of options when it comes to houses. They're very cheap and very affordable. This way, right. if anything happens to you, you can still afford to pay that mortgage. Now, when I say 33%, I basically mean the mortgage, the taxes, the insurance, the HOA fee, everything included, and even the maintenance, right? Cannot be more than 33% of your monthly income. Now, once you buy this property, and it's only 30% of, of your monthly income, you still have extra money. You grab that extra money, you put it towards the mortgage. Now, let's say, for example, five, six, seven years down the line, you pay this off in full. Now, what does it mean? It means, for example, you've been investing, you own a property, clear, so it's all yours. Your expenses are very, very low now, right? Meaning your housing cost is very low. So now you have all this money you're making. What do you do with that money? You can go ahead and basically invest more, give more, or have more fun. Or, for example, you can buy more rental properties. But even rental properties, I will still put down 20% and I will put a tenant there and I will use that money to pay the mortgage, but also use my money to pay it off in full. And once it's paid off in full, I move on to the next one and the next one. Now, the problem with this theory, well, idea is that basically it takes a long time. The first right. house is going to be the hardest. The second one's going to be a little easier. The third one, a little bit easier. The fourth, fifth, once you get to the fifth or sixth, it's going to be a, a lot, lot more easier because those properties, the other ones, are going to help you pay for another one, right? That's the idea. It's slower, but by the time you turn 30 or 35, most likely, you have five, six properties, all cash, all yours, passive income coming in, a job you actually like and enjoy, your cost of living are very low, and your cost of business are also pretty low. And all the cash flow you make is 100% yours also. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, definitely. Now, that's 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 option A. That's what I would do. Mm -hmm. Now, option B, according to what you read, is probably going to be, hey, you get a skill, you start making money, you qualify for a loan, you get an FHA loan, you know, you put down 3.5%, maybe like 5%, you buy a property, you stay there for a year, you buy another one, you move over there, you rent that one out, so you buy another one, again, 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 and again. Before you know it, maybe, maybe you're at 27, you have 5, 6, 10 properties. Now, the problem is you have very little equity in it. The problem is right. you bought houses that were really expensive. So if anything happens, you can't afford it. If you have vacancies, you're going to be sweating. If you have crazy um, expenses like, oh, my gosh, your roof broke down, whatever it is, you're going to have a problem also. So one way is faster but takes a lot, a lot more risk. But one way is slower but takes a lot less risk. And the goal is when it comes to passive income and also investing in financial freedom, the goal is to basically keep your wealth. The goal is not to take crazy risks and basically have to reverse and basically say, hey, I lost everything. I'm going to start over again. No, the goal is to say, I want to buy, I'm going to take care of myself first, buy my property, pay it off. Good. I buy the next rental property now and do that slowly, slowly, slowly. And I build up wealth over time. Does that make sense? Yeah, I get what you're saying. Mm -hmm. But your priority right now, bro, is going to be save your money. All of it, most likely. And when you go, if you want to get a license, a, a, a real estate license, or for example, going to nursing or a trade job or into college, you use that money to basically pay for it in cash. That way, you get that skill and you graduate debt free. Now, as far as you, are you gonna go to college? By the way, have you thought about uh, it? I, yeah. So what I'm thinking about doing is going to a, a community college to get a, a business, an associate's degree in business management. And that's it? Yeah, for college, yes. Okay, now here's my advice, right? Business management is very broad. So uh -huh. usually, you're not going to get a job. It's not a skill you actually want if you want to get a job that pays you a lot of money or a good amount of money. Now, the big thing is basically community college is awesome. If you can find a college that's going to basically give you general education, like general education, like the credits, you can grab those sixty credits and then basically transfer them over to a four-year school and graduate from that four-year school in two years because you already did those prerequisites. Now, the idea is when you go to community college to do this, the answer is 
you get to pay a lot less money for those credits because again, it's community college. And while you're there, you're also working and saving money. So when you go, for example, to that four-year school, the state school, to maybe do accounting or finance or anything you want to do, right? That's going to make you money. It's been proven. You can pay for it in cash. Does that make sense? Yeah, I get what you're saying. Um, I had a question though. So um, mm -hmm. what, what would you say about um, house hacking for your first property? If it aligns with the 30% rule, I don't care, right? So if you can buy a property on a 15-year mortgage that's no more than 30% of your monthly income, you can house hack it, great. But I don't want to play a game where I have to rely on somebody else to help pay my mortgage. Because if, if they can't help me or I have a problem, then it's going to be a problem for me also. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. So if you buy a house, right, and you're like 24, 25 years old, and you have three bedrooms or four bedrooms, you rent out three bedrooms, you stay in one, and you can still afford the mortgage by yourself fully with the rule I gave you. All the money they give you just goes towards the property to pay it's, it off faster. Right. right? Okay, I get it. So once it's done and being paid off, you kick them out <laughs> or you keep them there, you know, whatever you want to do, you know, to like help yeah. you buy the next property. But again, you know, the thing is right now you're, you're 17, man. Uh, when you're 23, 24, you might have met a girl and she's like, I don't want house hacking. You know what I mean? So it, it can be a whole different game by that point. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Yeah. So so it's all about what do you want to do? The first thing is a skill. The skill, pay for it in cash by saving up your money now. No sneakers, no going out, no crazy stuff. And just pay for cash for the community college. So when you... Do, do, for example, general education so you can transfer those credits over to the four-year school to get a degree you actually are going to be good at. It's going to pay you a lot of money, and it's actually, you're actually good at it in a way, right? So do research by going to laborstatistics.gov. Find a career that makes sense, that you like, you're good at, and it's going to pay you money, okay? All right, you said libertystatistics.gov? Yeah. All right, I'm writing that down right now. So um, I actually... When no, no, labor, like labor statistics, labor statistics. Uh, labor yeah, you go to labor just type in labor statistics and you'll find all the articles on it. And I'll show you, for example, the best jobs, how much to pay and so on. It's ROI, right? So when you buy one, of the, when you when you buy one of these skills, because you're buying it, basically, you got to make sure that skill is going to pay you a good amount of money. You don't want to do one for the sake of doing one. Right. It's not how you want to do it. And the reason I say go to community college first, because basically that way you save a lot of money on those prerequisites. And when you go to the four-year school to do that two years extra, that's basically that's all you need. You can basically pay for that in cash because basically you save up all the money beforehand. Okay, so basically you're saying like, well, I get find a skill, find a job that you can have in that skill, and then build like build money, save money until you can finance a property, and then just keep financing from there. Well, remember, right, the, the goal is you're going to finance the first time because you're putting down 10, 20 percent. It's very hard to buy a property for a lot of like all that money. So you finance, mm -hmm. but the goal is to own. So you're putting all the extra money towards paying off this property. Before you do that, you have to save for emergencies. While you're paying off all this right. property, you're also investing money, 10 to 20 percent of your income towards retirement. That way, seven years from now, or 10 years, or five years, once you're done with that whole property, you also have money in your retirement. That's the goal. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, one, I get it now. one tip is this, man. Don't rush it, okay? You are 17 years old. You're already on the right path. But you'll see, for example, like YouTubers talking about a lot of money, Instagram talking about a lot of money. Just take your time, okay? The skills going to take some time. They're probably going to take some time, but when you're 30, 32 years old, you're going to be ways beyond everyone else. And it's not really about anybody else. It's more about yourself. So if you're going to be comfortable by that age, you own a property. It's yours paid and clear. You can also get passive income from the investments you actually have. You'll be fine. Does that make sense? Yeah, I understand. I also, um, I have a partner. I have a partner right now. We're both getting into real estate and, um, Right now, what we were both doing currently is like finding different where where it's legal, finding different properties for like other investors, and then getting a commission off of that. Wholesaling. Yes. Listen, man. Wholesaling, you can do it if you want to, but it's a job. You know what I mean? So it'll probably right. get you, for example, really good at finding properties that are actually undervalued and so on. 
because they're gonna sell it to they can sell a contract to like an investor so that's awesome it got you experience but remember right this is a job that's what it is it's a job right okay so I would I would I say you do that the answer is yes I would do that with mostly making money at the same time because that money that you make from that is very infrequent I'm guessing right it's very unpredictable right right exactly yeah so sometimes I would say, you get people sometimes you don't get deals no exactly so I would say yo I am working this job right here it makes me a thousand two thousand dollars while I'm going to school and I also do wholesaling when I'm done with school right that way I make money here I get experience there but I'm also working on this skill. That's the answer. And sometimes you might want to just be hyper focused on one thing, and that's fine. Okay, I understand. Okay. You have any more All questions? Right. Uh, no, that you basically covered pretty much everything. Okay, was this helpful? Yeah, definitely, definitely gave me some insight. I definitely appreciate it because I DM when I was back when I was 16 a few months ago. I did DM you and. Uh, of course, you didn't see it because, you know, I know you got a lot of activity going on over there. So mm -hmm. it's good that I got a chance to speak with you. Yeah, that's why I do these, man, because um, if you don't get the chance to DM me, you can always just schedule a call. You can talk to me one on one. And this is a lot better than a DM, you because know, I might reply to your DM. Then I might have to wait a few months to see your DM again or a few days. And then you're like, when is this guy going to reply to me? But this way, it's just like, you know, a, a conversation, you know? Yeah, definitely. I definitely appreciate you doing this. And, and by the way, man, um, all these calls are free, but also it's not a one-time thing. So if you change uh -huh. your mind about something, if you have any questions, you can always just schedule another call and I'll give you another call, okay? All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, man. Have fun, man. And be patient, okay? All right. All right. All right peace out. All right, guys. What is this? All right, guys. So that right there was Jalen, okay? And by the way... A lot of 17 year olds, 16 year old when he watched my content. And now I was like, I wanna get into real estate. You know, one thing is basically, we are doing a great job educating people as YouTubers, right? But in reality, what I never wanna do is create impatience and feeling like you're not doing enough. The answer is, there is a patience research facilitating part of your life that you have to go through, right? And that's basically the beginning. So you gotta go out there, you gotta do your research. You got to get a skill. You got to facilitate that skill to basically solve a problem. That's the whole idea here. So once you get that skill, Jalen, and you're making a good amount of money, then you can work towards financial freedom for yourself and then get into rental properties and so on and so on, okay? That's the core idea and that is what I practiced and that is what I would do, okay? Because you never know what's going to happen. You know, you buy this property, your house hacking is too expensive. You lose your job. Now this person's not paying you. What do you do now? Okay. You go on default, you get foreclosed on, and now for the next seven years, you're gonna have a big problem, right? That's not what I want for anyone. But if you're a little patient, you get a skill, you graduate, right? Whether that's a license, a trade job, I don't care what it is, it's just a skill to make you money. Everything in life is money, right? Well, not money. Everything in life is skill. Skill equals money. Problems, right? The size of the problem you solve, the more money you'll make, right? That's that's the whole idea. So you make 40K, 50K, you save, 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 save. You buy the property you actually need. Make sure you have emergencies. You keep investing also. And then once you own this property in seven, eight years, you start really, really early. You're 30, 31 years old. Point out a 30-year-old that you know personally that owns a property paid in clear, right? And also has a bunch of money in investments. And also has a stable job. Point one out. You don't know, right? My grandparents still have a house they're paying for. All right. That's that's how crazy this is, okay? But patience is going to go a very long way. Well, great call, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for calling. On top of that, also, if you want to call me next, well, make a schedule down below and I'll give you a call from Monday to Friday, 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. And all calls are actually free. On top of that, join me on my other channels. Links down below where I also post every single day. On top of that, also, like, subscribe, hit the bell, shit notified. Also, follow me on Instagram, Tiny Bryson. And before I go, thanks for watching, guys. And as always, peace.